Did you know that God's Learning Channel is available on a wide variety of different platforms? For starters, GLC can be watched in parts of Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Colorado by cable or antenna. GLC is also available to watch in our Galaxy 19 direct-to-home satellite equipment throughout North America with no subscription fees. Great for viewers in rural areas with no internet connection. Our free broadcast and program archives are available via 24-7 web streaming on our website at glctv.tv. For our online friends, GLC Radio and Audio Podcast are available for free streaming throughout iTunes, TuneIn, or Shoutcast on your computer or mobile device. Likewise, our YouTube channel contains hundreds of free video clips that you can easily share with your friends and family. You can also watch our live broadcast from program archives of your favorite episodes directly on your television with an affordable subscription-free device called Roku, containing thousands of channels to choose from. We urge our viewers to take advantage of these various ways to watch or listen to GLC, and we ask that you spread the word to your friends and family. We can't continue to grow without your help. Well, welcome to a Wednesday cold afternoon in Odessa Midland. It is pretty cold in Odessa. Yeah. And, um, but here we are again. I'm glad you're here with us. So, oh, I want to say one thing before we get started. This book I wrote a few years ago, and I noticed in the bookstore they still have them, and they'll give it you one if you come in there. We better tell Jerry that. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the TV program, Jerry. Oh, uh, okay. But, okay. But I'm not going to rewrite another book till this one's all gone. So they have to come in to get it? Yeah. That's okay. my way of saying, we sure need you to come to our bookstore. <laughs> well, what and if, this is your free gift. Okay. All right. If they visit the bookstore. But we have people who buy online. A lot of people buy online. A lot of people call in. What about those people who can't come to the bookstore? I don't work at the bookstore, so I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> how would you answer it? I would say if they want to pay the shipping on it, she can include it with an order. Oh, they could do that, couldn't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but please don't make Jerry make an extra trip to the post office. to. I'm glad you brought up the bookstore. Okay. Because there's a couple of things. All right. Number one, I had told you on Monday that the bookstore will be closed this coming Monday. It won't be. Jerry won't be there, but Becky will be in there covering. So that's really good news. Also, Jerry has told me that she's been getting calls from people going, where are our DVDs from the, the Roundup? Nuggets. The Nuggets. The Nuggets DVD. Where are those? Where are our year-end receipt letters? Well, number one, it's not the year-end yet, so we don't send out year-end receipt letters until January. But the Nugget DVDs, we have a big a batch of those ready to go. Um, just one small problem. Monica had the audacity to have her baby. She's out on baby leave. I did talk to her yesterday. She's the only one who knows how to do the bulk mailing part. She didn't have time to train anyone on that before she left. So she had her nerve going into labor then. Didn't she, she did. Yeah, and she, okay. it was very unexpected because she was planning on the Monday after Thanksgiving to, uh, print the labels for the DVD nuggets and, and do several things that pertained to that project. She went in for her doctor's checkup that morning and the doctor says, today's the day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, I talked to Monica and if at all possible, she is going to be coming in sometime this week to print out the labels and get the bulk mailing thing ready to go. So we can at least okay. send out that the first batch of the nuggets, which is really good news. Mm -hmm, it is. Well, there's another good thing, too, about that, is at least we haven't disappointed you, and you're saying they're not doing it. We are <laughs> doing it. But some people have nerve going to have babies, don't they? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. You have a letter? I got a letter. Shall I read it? Yes, but before you do, I want to tell everybody. Okay. Tomorrow night, I can't remember what's airing tonight. But I do know that tomorrow night is the new edition of House Call. We moved it up a week because next Thursday night would be Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. Who's going to be watching TV? <clears throat> well, not enough. Not enough people to justify the airing of that. So we're airing that tomorrow night, Thursday night. You want to watch it. It's very interesting. It's, it's asthma. And even if you don't have asthma... Dr. Scott does a really good job of talking about a lot of other things that 
everything ties together. Mm -hmm. And it was it was an amazing program. So anyway, that's tomorrow night. Now you can read your letter. It goes, Dear GLC crew, I'm enclosing my raindrop raindrop check for this month. I have not been able to receive GLC for more than a week. They tell me there is trouble with the signal out of Roswell. I hope this can be corrected soon because it's my favorite channel. I can no longer see, but I can listen. Thank you for your good programs. I received GLC on Comcast Channel 27. Sincerely, Mrs. Covey of Deming, New Mexico. Well, Mrs. Covey, let me tell you, we have taken and get given uh, to the Comcast people the equipment to replace and put you on the Galaxy 19 satellite for you and uh, Silver City and one other of the Comcast places. So, Yeah, hopefully. we sent that equipment over to Comcast. Yeah, so I wonder when this letter came in. Did it have a date on it? It, it did, and, and I, I think it might have even... Could it have been the end of November? If it, mm. if that came in the end of November, then that should have been taken yeah, care of by I now. Think it probably no, has it been. isn't. We checked on it yesterday. Really? Really? And the technician is from Comcast. There's something going on there, but they'll get it done. Mm -hmm. Thank God for Comcast doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It makes me wonder, is anybody else missing us? Because <laughs> there are... I think it's 19 Comcast, 19 Sun Lake places that we haven't got around to, and we're not sure what yeah. they're going to do about Yeah, it. I just saw that list, and there's a lot of them. We have mm -hmm. a lot of partners in those areas. Mm -hmm. I know we have viewers. Yes. 21,450 cable subscribers that are missing in Comcast. How about that? Okay. Well, when you have a city like their headquarters in Lubbock with 54,000, customers on it you know it's but we still miss all of you well i'm talking Where about paducah and rotan mm -hmm. and yeah. there's there's all kinds of little towns yes, they are. i know we got viewers out there mommy have a devotion i do and yeah, we've been talking about dedicated obedience to the lord well hebrews 11:30 says that by faith the walls of jericho fell down after they'd been encircled for seven days. After spending 40 years in the wilderness, the children of Israel crossed into the Promised Land, arriving to immediately face what seemed an impregnable fortress and an impossible task. Imagine receiving the instructions to march around the fortified city seven times for seven days, and then finally be commanded to shout with all your might and sound the shofar. It seemed like such a ridiculous warfare strategy. And yet this time, they followed the instructions, marching around the walled city of Jericho. And on the seventh day, after seven times around on the seventh day, witnessed the miraculous collapse, which opened the way to victory. Obeying the voice of the Lord in faith was met with His supernatural intervening power. The object lesson, do what God says, Follow his instructions, putting your faith into action. Faith that works is true faith, and it reveals the awesome God whom we serve. Respond to God's word obediently, no matter how ridiculous it may seem. And when he's ready, your breakthrough will come. You know, in 1993, when we made our first trip to Israel with Hayseed Stevens, we went to Jericho. Yes, we and did. they had the greatest little marketplace there, coffee, friendly, just outside the old wall. I think it was about after the Infada, we went back there after Arafat took it over and the Palestinians. The market wasn't there, and it wasn't a very friendly place. Mm -hmm. No, once it became... Oh, you weren't allowed in. Once it became Palestinian controlled, it mm -hmm. was not a very pretty yeah. place. Right. Kind of like Bethlehem. But that's not the yes. what the media would have you in think. Israel. Media bias is so tremendous against Israel. And it's you know, this is one of the reasons why I personally feel it's very important to have a, a television station stateside that is committed to 
to telling the truth about Israel. You know, right. I mentioned that I had talked to Danny Bengigi on Monday. And, you know, he's an Israeli Jew. Doran Kidar, Israeli Jew. Jeremy Gimpel, Ari Abramowitz, all Israeli Jews, right? They can't believe that a place like this exists, that there is a television broadcast station stateside that knows the truth and will stand up and for it. them. Mm-hmm. You know, always in the media you hear West Bank, West Bank, West Bank, West Bank. Well, that's the world's way of saying what scripturally is the heartland of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Everything important, for the most part, took place right there. It's Judea and Samaria. Mm -hmm. So you never hear secular media talking about Judea and Samaria. No, they want to talk about the West Bank. And the more you hear that term, the more you think, you know, they, those Palestinians, they have a, uh, a rightful claim to that, but the Jewish people don't. So let's talk about it in biblical terms, shall we? Mm-hmm. We're a religious TV station. Let's call it what God calls it, Judea and Samaria, the I, heartland I of think, Israel. I think people would be amazed to know that Jerusalem is in the West Bank. Yeah. East <clears throat> Jerusalem is in the East West Bank. East Jerusalem is in the West Bank. Because it's in Judea. That's right. Why and that? <clears throat> Judea lies <laughs> south of Jerusalem. And Samaria is north, and they touch each other. Mm-hmm. Last night I was watching the uh, <clears throat> GOP debate. Yeah, and I was about ready to gag, and so I turned over to our channel <laughs> and was watching. What's the two brothers? <laughs> Starts with the H E Y. Oh, the High of Boys, Joshua and Caleb. <laughs> and they had uh, on the guy who changed the direction the station went. Moshe Kapinski is their guest. Mm-hmm. And I missed it because I was watching the debate. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was something. Rats. It was really good. Maybe I'll be able to watch it. Okay. Our first article actually ties to what I have been talking Absolutely. about. You know, I'm not so sure that the, the people that are in this article that got targeted weren't interviewed by Joshua and Caleb. They might have been. Tura Winery. Mm-hmm. Yes, I really oh, do yes. think they were. Yeah. Okay, so Deputy Foreign Minister, it comes from Israel National News. <coughs> Deputy, Deputy Foreign Minister Zippy Hotavli, is that right? Hotavli. Hotavli? Yeah. Okay, and other officials harshly condemned the editors of The New Guide to Israeli Wine, a top resource for Israeli wine lovers, after they were revealed to be boycotting wineries from, oh, guess where? Judea and Samaria. Oh, really? On Tuesday night, Channel 2 exposed that Vered and Erez bin Saadon, owners of Torah Winery in Samaria's Rehalim, which has won numerous wine awards in Israel and abroad, were rejected by the editors for inclusion in the important wine book because they grow wine in the territories. Oh, no. In response to the expose, the foreign minister stated, While the state of Israel launches a struggle against the boycotts of Israel, sources at home who boycott Israeli products create a delegitimization of the state of Israel. Sources who take such activities act as agents of the Palestinian propaganda against Israel, and the serious phenomena of a boycott from home must be denounced and condemned. The editors of the book are Gal Zohar, a wine expert, and Yair Gott, the wine critic for Israel Hayom. It was revealed that they told Vered bin Saadon that her boutique wines would not be included, even while wines from the Golan Heights are included in the book, despite the fact that the Golan region is also past the 1949 armistice lines. M.K. Oren Hazan echoed Hotavli's condemnation, saying, I have no doubt that the Israeli wine guide, which already began a process of repentance when it recognized the Golan Heights as part of the state of Israel, will make complete repentance. That process should occur, he said, if for nothing else than because of the wonderful international wine produced in Judea and Samaria, which, as is known, 
is an inseparable part of the state of Israel. Amen. In response to the expose, the Samaria Regional Council announced that it intends to examine legal steps against the editors of the book. This book is not worthy of being taken seriously if its writers take out particular wineries for political reasons and not from professional considerations, said Yossi Begin, head of the council. We will examine legal steps and lawsuits according to the boycott law. Dagan added that it's very saddening to discover that within our people there are those who even in this difficult time, when we are all dealing with terror attacks, continue to libel and try to harm business owners in Judea and Samaria out of some sort of delusion that that will bring peace. Dagan called on Israeli citizens to fight the boycott and buy from the region. And on a related note, in a discriminatory move which ignores nearly 200 other territorial disputes worldwide, the EU recently decided to label Jewish products from Judea, Samaria, Eastern Jerusalem, and the Golan Heights with a special little mark. And there are mm -hmm. some countries that are coming, coming out and saying, no, mm -hmm. we are not taking part of, in that. Mm -hmm. Hungary's one of them. Good. Greece is one of them. Good. So They won't take part in it? No. Oh, boy. They're like, no. <laughs> no. Uh, I found a really interesting article on that today, but I knew that it was too long to share, so maybe we can share it at some other time. And an article from Arut Sheva, Palestinian Media Watch, exposed on Wednesday that Official Palestinian Authority children's programs have begun sending the message that Israel's existence is temporary and that Israel will eventually cease to exist. During a November broadcast, the host of the PA's Children's Talk stated that Israeli towns like Haifa, Jaffa, Acre, and Nazareth are in the 48 lands, a PA reference to all of Israel. The host then asked a little boy on the program, the occupation must know that we fully believe and are confident that all of this land belongs to us. The 48 lands are all ours and will return to us, right? In a later episode of the show, the same host repeated that all of Israel will become the state of Palestine. She explained to the children that Israeli Arabs who live in the 48 lands guard their existence as Palestinians, guard the place as Palestinian, and believe that all of the land will return to Palestine and to the state of Palestine under Palestinian rule. He must rule. I think the <clears throat> King of Kings will have something to say about that. Zing Man must have wrote everybody on our mailing list saying, GLC is never going to come back on the air again. And... Uh, we had so many things go wrong with our conversion. We've known it's going to happen. And then our engineer, our chief engineer, Dell, he's still in ice packs today. Mm -hmm. And that happened as we were getting ready to start. In September. Yeah. September. It was right before Roundup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all right. God sent Randall to do the conversions. You know, mm -hmm. I look at this as it's a, a time of testing for us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are we, are we going to stand our ground and keep believing? Ground? Because mm -hmm. you know what? When, when you watch the world's media, what's going on? When you really look into the media <laughs> and you see what's being covered up. Oh, my. It's, it's like, Lord, it's so important that the church begins, really begins to understand your love for Israel, your love for the Jewish people, the importance biblically of Israel and especially Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. It's not just some coincidence that the whole world is focused on that one region mm -hmm. in the entire world. Well, let's focus on that one. Yeah. Kind of like this book you, you gave the magic word coincidence. I've been rereading this book and it sure does me a lot of good. In many places I just say, was it a miracle or is it a coincidence? Because most of the church doesn't believe in miracles. 
And if you don't believe in miracles, don't bother to get this book. But maybe if you do get it, it might make you understand well, here, there here's are. Here's the thing, Dan. If mm -hmm. most of the church doesn't believe in miracles, that's really a really good explanation of why the church is in the state that it's in. Mm -hmm. right. Why serve a God who doesn't do right. miracles? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I can take care of things myself. I don't need God. Mm -hmm. Well, I can wake up in the middle of the night and... As an old man, my hand can be hurting. I'll raise it up and say, thank you, Yeshua, for healing that hand. I put it back down in bed and I quit hurting and I'll go to sleep. <laughs> Am I wrong? Um, no. Okay, we got some news, so let's get some news done, okay? okay. All right, this one comes from uh, Israel National News. Mm -hmm. Egyptian Air Force planes have in recent months crossed into Israeli airspace as part of Egypt's military campaign against the Sinai affiliate of the Islamic State. Yet, Yedioth Aronoth reported on Tuesday. According to the newspaper, the unprecedented flights were conducted in coordination with the IDF and were conducted mostly in the triangular border between Israel, Israeli territory, Egyptian land, and southern Gaza. According to Yedioth Aronoth report, the Egyptian aircraft bombed ISIS targets mere kilometers away from the Israeli border in the vicinity of Al Arish and Sheikh Zawid in the northern Sinai. The flights are believed to be the first time that Egyptian warplanes entered Israeli airspace since the Yom Kippur War in 1973. Mm. The peace treaty signed between Egypt and Israel in 1979 imposed strict limitations on Egyptian deployment in the Sinai but in recent years, Israel has permitted the Egyptian military to boost its presence in the peninsula several times. Because Egypt is really being attacked okay. by Islamic you, State. You had pulled an article that was really long. I don't see anything that, that compares to it because we didn't include it today. But it talked about ISIS in the Sinai. Yeah. That's actually how they're known. Mm -hmm going into Gaza, working with Hamas, mm -hmm. and Hamas really working to, to strengthen them and for ISIS to strengthen Hamas. Mm -hmm. So things are really heating up over there. They are. They are. And another article from... Which means, are you praying for Israel? We're always supposed to be praying for the mm -hmm. peace of well, Jerusalem. Well, that's what I'm saying to the audience. Are you doing that? Okay, another article from Israeli National News, and this is a really good article. I love this story. A large marble board containing Hebrew letters found Wednesday during University of Haifa's excavations at the Kersey National Park proved the ancient settlement was either a Jewish or a Jewish Christian community. Located near the eastern shore of the Sea of Galilee, the National Park also holds the ruins of a Byzantine-era Christian monastery. It was named Kersey after a nearby Syrian town. An ancient town of Kersey, however, is also believed to exist. It has been identified in Christian tradition as the site of the so-called miracle of the swine, where Jesus healed one or two men possessed by demons by driving the, the demons into a herd of pigs. Professor Michael Otzi, one of the directors of the excavation site told Channel 10, this first evidence points to the existence of a Jewish settlement and strengthens the theory, which until now has been folklore, that the settlement is Kursi, the place Jesus visited and performed the famous miracle of the swines, according to the New Testament. Professor Artsy noted the existence of a Jewish settlement on the eastern shores of the Galilee is a very rare thing. Until now, we had no proof that Jewish settlements, which have disappeared over the years, did actually exist at that time near the Galilee shores, except for Migdal. The writing engraved on the board found Wednesday is in Aramaic, albeit with Hebrew letters. It's estimated to be 1,500 years old. Excavators have already managed to read two words, Amen and Marmaria which apparently means marble, though other researchers believe it might be an allusion to Mary, Maryam, the mother of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. We, yes. have, we have been to that site. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Well, um, I, don't, I guess we have a, 
time for this article from the IFA. Um, Prime Minister, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has stepped up his rhetorical campaign to convince the world that the surge in Palestinian violence is not born of frustration against Israel's decades-long military occupation, but instead is the work of radical Islam. In a series of speeches and public pronouncements since the Paris attack last month, Netanyahu's been urging the United States and the international community to view the latest wave of daily Palestinian knife, gun, and vehicular ac attacks against Jewish Israelis as a part of a globalized assault by extremist Muslims against Western democracies. Israel continues to fight for its existence against international anti-Semitism and thinly disguised terrorist attacks on its own streets from Hamas and other threats, while Israeli leaders watch Iran arm itself and become more belligerent in its denunciation of Israel's right to survive and live in peace. Pray for Mr. Netanyahu and for Israel's government and people to preserve and have peace. To persevere and have peace. Yes. See, they're being tested too. And okay, from the ICEJ. Israel's Counterterrorism Bureau posted a warning to Israelis traveling abroad to be on the alert for attacks by the Islamic State terror militia. The warning comes a day after senior officials from the U.S., Russia, Europe, and the Middle East prepared to gather in New York this week to address the battle against ISIS. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry was in Moscow Tuesday to hold preparatory meetings with Russian President Vladimir Putin and emerged to tell reporters that the Obama administration has backed off its demand that Syrian President Bashar Assad must leave office as part of the plans to bring the conflict in Syria to an end and concentrate efforts on defeating ISIS. Meanwhile, Russian officials disclosed this week that they are investigating as many as 1,600 individuals and organizations of Russian origin they believe are aiding uh, the Islamic State in some way. Along with over 2,900 Russian citizens believed to be actively fighting in Iraq and Syria with terrorist groups there. Alexander Bortnikov, uh, director of the Federal Security Service, the main successor of the KGB, <clears throat> added that intelligence exists to prove that, that 198 Russian citizens have been killed in the fighting, while another 214 have returned to Russia, roughly half of which have been caught by authorities and are being investigated. Meanwhile, U.S. Defense Secretary <laughs> Ashton Carter addressed troops at Inkerlik Air Base in Turkey on Tuesday, giving them an overview of the U.S. strategy to battle ISIS and declaring, among other things, that Washington hopes other allied powers make a more substantial contribution to the fight. Mm -hmm. And over in Dubai, Saudi Arabia on Tuesday announced the formation of a 34-state Islamic military coalition to combat terrorism, according to a joint statement published on state news agency SPA. The countries there mentioned have uh, decided on the formation of a military alliance led by Saudi Arabia to fight terrorism with a joint operations center based in Riyadh to coordinate and support military operations, the statement said. A long list of Arab countries, such as Egypt, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, together with Islamic countries, Turkey, Malaysia, Pakistan, and Gulf Arab and African states, were also mentioned. It, it's about time they stood up to do something. I wish they'd do something about the refugee problem. You know, one of the things that... Uh, it was really an answer to prayer for me because here, sitting at this desk, we're very aware of the, the things that are, are going on and what has been going on with the Islamic State and whatnot. So for that to be like the for, in the forefront of every mind in America right now, for the most part, is an amazing thing and quite an answer to prayer. Mm -hmm. You know what? We sure love you, and we will see you again Friday. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem.